Hello and welcome to Solution Video 2. This is about water. We don't need objectives. Where would you be without water? Short answer is you wouldn't be. Um, water has very unique physical properties when compared to all other compounds you can imagine. Um, understanding this helps us understand water's behavior. Understanding why it has these features is a key part of this course. Um, things to think about water, um, and one thing that's not listed here is water has a mass of 18 grams per mole. Okay, 18 grams per mole. And then on top of that very small mass, it's a liquid at room temperature, which is pretty uncommon. Uh, it's a great solvent for ionic compounds, polar compounds, and even gases. Its solid density is less than its liquid density. That's the ice versus water. It has a high boiling point compared to other compounds uh, that are similar to it. It has a very high heat of vaporization. Uh, it has a very high surface tension, and it has a very high specific heat. All these properties um, and more are, are related to things we already know about water. So here's the Lewis structure again. You're probably pretty familiar with this by now. The Lewis structure for water is a bent molecular shape, a tetrahedral electron pair geometry, and a it's extreme polarity for a polar molecule. It's it's uh, you know darn near ionic for things that are both... Uh, for our covalent bond. Um, of course it does not ionize much in water you'll learn. It ionizes a very small amount uh, but what you need to see here is that water's electrons are bunched on the oxygen. The electron density is really uh, mostly around oxygen because of its uh, significant electronegativity. So this is our polarity diagram combined. I went ahead and put in a giant plus arrow just so you can see the direction of the polarity and the sigmas to help you see, uh, not sigmas, pardon me, to the deltas to see where the charge concentrations are across these, this molecule. Oxygen is attracted to hydrogen and vice versa, forming strong hydrogen bonds between water molecules. If you remember, um, hydrogen bonds, which would be this here and this here, are the strongest form of intramolecular force. Um, and these hydrogen bonds are responsible for the high boiling point, high heat vaporization, and high surface tension of water. And so you can see that the oxygen centers are attracted to the hydrogen feet, if you will. <clears throat> In liquid water, these bonds form and break all the time. The water molecules slide over each other. Um, and water does vaporize at room temperature, you know, quite a good amount. You watch a, uh, a cup of water um, evaporate over a series of days if you just leave a cup laying on the countertop. It's not that it doesn't have a vaporization uh, uh, value. It does have a vapor pressure. It does exert vapor on the air around it. We learned that also in the gas laws unit when we had to account for the, um, uh, the pressure of water and, and any, any gas collected over water. So this is a, a comparison of water to other similar compounds uh, from group 16. The boiling point and melting points compared to other compounds um, are pretty astounding. So you know that oxygen in group 16, so sulfur, selenium, and tellurium, water's unique properties are unique even among its analogs. Water has got a very high boiling point and a very high freezing point when compared to hydrogen sulfide, hydrogen selenide, and hydrogen telluride. Uh, and this is an increasing mass. This, this jog right here is related to water's um, uh, extreme polarity and uh, its other properties as well. But this, this is why water is so unique. You know, you, you compare it to a similar molecule and it's completely different. Water molecules affinity for one another through hydrogen bonding is called cohesion, okay? Water molecules uh, cannot bond with air. So the water molecules on the surface are not hydrogen bound evenly. They're pulled inward and this leads to minimize their surface and result in large surface tension. Water droplets try to become spherical, at least, uh, what this means they have the least surface area. And so if you ever drop a droplet out of a dropper, or just off the, finger, the tip of your finger, if you watch closely, it, it, when it drops off your finger, it forms a sphere before it fall, uh, hits the ground. Um, but this little guy is able to walk on water, is distributing his mass over a large surface area, is able to walk across water. Surfactants um, are another key uh, substance that work with water. Okay, now uh, surface active agents are able to break surface tension because they are very polar large compounds typically. This would be something like a soap. Okay, they're molecules that are called surface active agents. They disturb surface tension by breaking hydrogen bonds. They're mostly soaps but include any molecule that are usually quite large that contain a polar portion and a nonpolar portion. And uh, 
basically when you look at this drawing pitch into the little legend down here the bound surfactants are bound to either water or something else free surfactants are floating free in the water and uh, you notice we have air here um, and then we have uh, you might kind of recognize this similar to a micelle um, we have uh, grease and it's been emulsified by that surfactant we have some sort of dispersed particle like dirt maybe and then we have metal um, and uh, all the particles are attracted to a different part of that surfactant. But the key thing is a surfactant can break, can break surface tension. So you ever see a spider walking on water, drop a little bit of soap next to him and he'll fall in. He'll get back out though. Water is known as the universal solvent because it easily dissolves polar substances more than any known, li known liquid. Um, life as we understand it depends wholly on that property of water at the cellular level. All of our biological processes take place in an aqueous medium that we owe to water. Um, another factoid you need to kind of understand is that pure water in its H2O form is not found in nature. Um, if we put distilled water out on the tabletop, it won't stay distilled long. It's going to dissolve things in the air uh, pretty rapidly, and eventually it'll become pretty uniform with the substances that are flying around in the air. Water's density is interesting. Uh, the density of steam is, of course, very low, uh, but water at the same temperature has that the density of about the same as water that's almost frozen. Um, and what you see is as you cool water, its density approaches one. And when you right when you turn it to ice, though, the density drops again. So the most dense form of water is the liquid form, okay? And the closer it is to freezing, uh, but still in liquid form, the closer it is to a density of one gram per milliliter. So here, iceberg. Here's all the evidence you need. Okay, we'll just pretend this isn't salt water for a minute, but this, we know that ice floats on water. Um, ice. Solid water has a 3D shape that, um, at microscopic level, would look like a honeycomb if you could see it. At zero Celsius, hydrogen bonds between molecules stabilize naturally in this crystal shape. Uh, this shape has more empty space between the particles than the liquid state does, and this why density of uh, ice is lower than the density of water. So this is uh, liquid water uh, in a nice model. And we'll have um, a little model set in class so you can play around with this. But essentially these bonds are able to break and reform as water moves around and then sloshes around in a cup. Those are bond bonds are moving and breaking all the time. That's why they're called unstable hydrogen bonds. When water dips below zero Celsius, <clears throat> we see that a three-dimensional honeycomb-like pattern forms subject to that tetrahedral shape we're so used to. And if you'll notice, this empty space between these particles is bigger than any empty space you would have in liquid water. This concludes video two, water. You should have taken high quality notes. Please rewatch this video, any parts of it as you need, uh, and come to class with questions.